Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here and you don't know what we do, I basically just buy dumb stuff like this off Facebook Marketplace and play around with it, have some fun, sell it, keep it, you know, usually keep it <laughs> till the wife makes me sell it. Nah, she usually doesn't care on some of that stuff, but finally we're getting ready. It's Saturday, long day ahead of us. We got a bunch of fresh cold ones. We're gonna get the 307 pulled out of this, basically just kind of gut the whole engine bay, drop the big block in, and just try and keep it bare minimal uh, for this build. So I'm gonna get that off. We're gonna start with the hood. You'd think we need some step ladders to get in that thing, because it's so damn far in the air, but got the forklift with the pallet on there. Just gonna raise that up to perfect working height. Get the hood off and start pulling bolts out. So yeah, we uh, had a little damage from trying to run the car over. We bent that because the tire smashed into the fender. We also bent that uh, eighth inch thick black pipe that I used for our crossover steering. Oh well. A lot of people said flip the Pitman arm. A couple problems with that. Most times those are uh, splined specifically so that only goes on one way. I don't know if that's the case for Cadillac, but regardless, if I flipped it 180, it would hit the frame and also it would put it so far behind the front axle that our Y-Link here would be like diagonal and definitely wouldn't work very well. The AC does work on this motor too, so we're gonna try and keep that and see if we can't build a bracket to put it on the big block, because let me tell you, AC is nice in this thing. It actually works pretty decent, so. We're making some pretty good progress. Pretty much got most of our vacuum lines off, AC compressors off. Definitely figuring out how to put that on the big block. Um, this thing's got like 10,000 different heater lines on it. For sure this has been swapped. Um, there's just zip ties everywhere, hose clamps everywhere, so many lines unhooked. Check this out. Not even a bottom plate. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, we're getting close. I'm going to pull the fan off just so we have a little bit more clearance there. I don't want to damage the radiator since we're going to reuse that. Got to pull the motor mount bolts. Um, and other than that, drive shaft and trans mount. I'm going to pull them both out at the same time because I don't want to mess with the bell housing bolts. For an off-road rig, we need to eliminate all that and make it as easy as possible to work on this thing. Trying to get the power steering lines off. It's just everything for me to reach my hand in there. Probably an easier way to do it, but since I messed up my back this morning lifting something I really shouldn't have been lifting, this is, this is the less painful way, even though I can only turn the line a millimeter at a time. I gotta say, I don't know why somebody would have put a 307 in this big old thing, but a pretty good assumption. And it's probably the same position I'm in. They got it nice and cheap. It was better than what it had at the time, probably. Which was probably a blown up motor. Power steering's unhooked, got the ground wires off. All the vacuum lines, all the electrical, temp sensor, oil sensor, fan. I think we're ready to pull the motor mount bolts and also get the get the trans mount off and pull the drive shafts. Drive shafts out. I ended up just cutting it because I didn't want to mess with the center. Your hanger bearing here. We'll deal with that later. Um, plus, I gotta cut and extend and weld and measure and do a bunch of other things around here so I'm not reusing those drive shafts is just way faster to go the grinder got the exhaust cut off here kinda come on I'm just really not 
liking DeWalt lately. They've been letting me down. I have to switch to something else. Oh, might have to start lifting weights too. Oh, who tightened this, Hulk? <laughs> Let's get a bigger one. I usually prefer to use uh, torque wrenches. This is a bad one that I just use as a little bit better of a ratchet to get some leverage on it. All right, now maybe the DeWalt will do something. Ready to rock and roll. We got the plate on there. I think everything's unhooked. I don't know. We're about to find out though. An engine swap without a little degreaser and get the old power washer out, spray it down, clean her up real nice. That's good. And that's a wrap for today. All right, I went ahead, I pulled the trans off this motor because we're gonna be moving this thing in and out a couple times to figure out the motor mounts there. another eight inches of room.
issue we're having here because the motor mounts on the motor originally are literally right here on the very front of the motor. On the stock motor, 307, whatever, it's not, I don't even know if 307s were stock, but anyways, they're typically in the middle of the motor. Um, so we're gonna have a heck of a plate there to just try and clearance everything with this. Hopefully we can take a couple measurements, slap some welds on, throw some plates at it. Put a 500 motor in, they said. Make all the torque, they said. Just, I knew, I didn't think it'd be bad, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. So, I got the motor sitting in there. The distributor is still sticking up past the hood about five inches. I'm like, what is this thing hitting on? And then, I crawl up here, and it's gonna be really hard to see, but uh, you can see there's all that space on the bottom back side of the motor. And right there where it's all dark, is the bottom of the oil pan. It's reversed. It's a front sump instead of a rear that was in this. So now, there's no way I'm gonna bring it far enough forward to clear the front cross member and not have the fan go into the radiator. So now we get the joys of cutting out the entire cross member, which I guess it might be easier in the end to try and figure out how to just weld some brackets from the frame to there and build a new tubular cross member or something. Let's uh, pull the motor back out, cut everything, literally everything out here, and then put the motor back in and figure out where the motor mounts are going to line up. Dang it. I sat here and stared at this motor for three weeks and I didn't realize the oil pan's on backwards. Well, it's on correct, but the sump's on the front side rather than the rear. All right, so we got it cut there, cut there, cut down there. Got to finish the front sides of both and finish right here. And I just thought I'd stop and try and talk myself out of it because the fuel lines are right here and, you know, grinding marks and fuel lines and given my uh, background of catching things on fire, I'm sure this is gonna go just perfect. now is just kind of take the grinder in here clean this up a touch I thought about cutting these brackets off right here because we really don't need those anymore and why well, I added time I guess they're not really in my way I guess also need to get the lower fan shroud out disconnect the steering arm here we gotta get the gearbox unbolted because we're actually gonna drop it down we gotta get that pitman arm either flipped around if we can if not I got a Chevy square body steering box that might actually work better. We're making progress though. So. The steering is completely different on that Dana 60. So now I gotta pull this axle out, put the Dana 60 under it, get that kind of positioned where we need to. The issue with this gearbox is, is everybody said flip the pitman arm 180 degrees to fix the steering. Yes, that would work in a way, but not this way. By doing that, it puts the point of connection like eight to 10 inches behind the axle. And for the Y length, it'd be like diagonal and it would never turn right doing that. Now, a GM steering box, which is what I picked up, the pitman arm goes sideways 
and then it moves it basically forward and backwards to connect to your driver's side wheel. So we might go that route um, rather than a Y length with the GM steer box. If I can, f if I can source a Ford steering box, um, it's completely different, and the Y link would work out perfect to do the high, the high lift steering. Um, and you know, yes, if money was not an option, we could we'd do the best of the best <laughs> since we got to change it anyways. But I'm doing with what I got, and I got a free steering box from a Chevy square body. Or, so that would work as far as hooking up to our driver's side tire with just basically a drag length. If I want to keep the Y length steering with that Dana 60, I would have to reuse this Cadillac gearbox if the Pitman arm is able to flip 180 degrees and then I could just bring it forward a bunch and then drop it down and re drill some holes in the frame and remount it basically to make that work. So what we're gonna do now is pull the motor back out Gonna put the forklift under the front of this to lift it up in the air. just slid out the old 10 bolt axle and Zach helped me bring in the 60. Um, so far it looks like it should line up as far as leaf spring perches so we don't have to re-weld any of that. The passenger side actually has two studs instead of a U-bolt on this axle. Problem is is with these leaf spring packs they're so thick that those studs aren't going to work so we're going to have to figure something out there. But for now, we'll be able to throw the one U-bolt on that side, both of them on this side, get it back up in the air, put the tires back on for right now. Um, and basically that's going to um, just help us figure out where the steering needs to mount and whatnot. We can worry about welding shock mounts on in the second part of this video, but for now, get this bolted in, get it back up on the wheels and should be good to go. We got a Dana 60. It just looks so much better with one tons under it. So we're gonna take the lug nuts off these, put the tires back on so we can set it back down on the ground. figured since we're already here doing axles, let's throw the rear axle in now. Um, super easy. I got the shocks unbolted here. Uh, Zach's working on our drive shaft. Look at the bolts that were holding the drive shaft in. <laughs> I think it's safe to say they wouldn't have lasted uh, another time running over a car or let alone going truck pulling. But we'll go ahead pull our U-bolts there and there, roll this axle out, and put the new one in. I've been fighting that for the last 10 minutes. But, the wheel can come off, lift the car back up, because we got that Cali lean, and we definitely don't want that. Roll the new Dana 70 underneath, bolt the wheels back on, put the U-bolts back on, 
and we'll be back in business. So we got the rear axle in, tires back on. Let's go put this gearbox in the shop, get the pitman arm off and pull these lines off so we can work with it a little bit better. I got the steering figured out. And like any engineer out there, I'm gonna make it so I can't take it back apart. <laughs> on the frame rail here, there's three bolts that bolt the stock gearing box to the frame. I took the top bolt of the gearbox and I just moved it down to the lower hole so that dropped it about five inches, which that's good enough. And I got the two bottom holes down here where I just need to basically put a plate and weld it to the frame to support the bottom of the gearbox. That's gonna work out just fine. We'll get the pitman arm flipped around as soon as my uh, tool is delivered. As was expected, this thing is grooved, but luckily, it's extremely hard to see but there's a groove on all four corners of this one. So we are able to flip that 180 degrees to fix our steering. So now with the five inch drop there, the three inch drop there, that's eight inches. We lifted it up 10, roughly. <laughs> Hopefully the steering will be way better than it ever was before. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it'll do the job, so can't wait to get that done. Once we get the gearbox and the new steering stem in place and the pitman arm on, then we can finally drop the motor on. Should do the job. What was that, Phoenix? Uh, nothing, these are super light, you know. Yeah! Actually, this limo is going to be part camper now. Thanks to Kevin, I robbed the drive shafts out of a camper he was scrapping. And uh, they're going to work for us, so that's going to save me about $200. <laughs> so we're finishing up the steering here. Um, basically, all I got to do is make a plate to bolt those two bottom bolts of our gearbox. I got the one bolt there. You can kind of see the pattern of the bolts there, but anyways, arts and crafts time. Through this cardboard up here, I kind of traced the layout of the frame that I need. Um, so we can cut that side, and then on the back side, I kind of cut the bottom of it so we can drill our two holes in there after I get this cut out of here and get the plate cut out of that. So, let's get the hand grinder out. It's out of plasma cutters. So I took the scissors, cut that out, boom, steering plate. It's probably wrong, but hopefully it's right enough. <laughs> Why does the wind have to pick up when I just got a belt? That is so my luck. Really? It's a clear day, not a cloud in the sky, and we got 20 mile an hour winds out here. It hasn't been windy all day either. We went ahead, we talked to Ballistic Fabrication yesterday. They are sending us a kingpin high steering mount for the passenger side only so we can do our Y length to our pitman arm, which I have the pitman arm flipped around now so we should be good and you can kind of see that it is in front of the axle versus before it would have been back here by flipping this around so that's why we had to move all this um, I went ahead I got the new shaft welded to our rag joint so we can actually should be able to slide this into place. It's grooved a certain way. There we go. And then we got this. It'll slide onto there. And hopefully, there we go. There's our extended steering shaft for the gearbox. Now, 
what we'll do, this heim joint slips right over top of these and basically that's gonna support this joint and also hold the steering shaft off the frame so we don't bind against the frame when we're steering. But I also want it to be tucked to the frame as close as possible given the big block, given the Cadillac 500 we're throwing in here. We need as much room as possible for the motor. So clearance is definitely a key for in here. All right, that's gonna kind of wrap it up for this video. Um, we got the axles under, we got the steering kind of situated. We're waiting on all kinds of parts for the steering yet. Uh, our, high, our high steer brackets for the Dana 60, we're waiting on those. Uh, also, we had to order new plates for the leaf springs because the Dodge ones are about an inch narrower than the GM. Had to order those. Had to order another knuckle because the steering box actually changed my mind. We're dropping it down here as low as possible and as far forward as possible. I also had to order shims for the bottom of the leaf springs to get our pinion angle to the transfer case. It's not there, but will be hopefully in a week. Um, try and make that a little less of an angle um, so we don't have crazy vibrations. Not that we're gonna be driving this thing down the interstate at 70 miles an hour or anything like that. I will likely trailer this everywhere we go. Besides the fast food restaurant, which hopefully we can do next week and see if we can't clear uh, some of the canopies <laughs> at all the fast food chains in Ames. Got the plate welded in as best as we could. We really were fighting the wind um, I got the outside pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead. I might finish welding the inside as well And then we'll get some bracing on that eventually next week um, But for now That's about all we can do. We got to wait on parts Everything sh should be in next week and I hope I ordered everything I need because we're obviously running out of time, but I'm feeling all right once we get the motor and trans in and Get the drive shafts made like I can make that motor run you know fairly easy and whatnot but it's a lot to do but it's not bad so yeah nothing too crazy but you get a little bit behind the scenes with this video uh, next videos we're obviously going to be taking it on a test drive video after that we'll be doing some truck pulling with this thing finally um, so with that being said guys go ahead hit that thumbs up hit the notifications if you want to see more on this giant Cadillac um, and feel free to share this video and hit that subscribe button if you like what you're watching. I appreciate it, and we will see you next week.